Do you have a lot of cookbooks? Like enough cookbooks that you had to move them into another room in your house, out of the kitchen? I think when you're a kid, you have a lot of cookbooks because you're literally using the cookbooks to learn how to cook. And then as you learn certain basic techniques, you start using cookbooks less for technique and more for inspiration. I want to know, well, what did people think about entertaining in the past? What was the first cookbook? What was the most famous cookbook? Who were famous chefs? Did they have a book? When did this all start? Well, there's been booklets about entertaining since Egyptian times, but of course you can get your hands on stuff from the 19th century, certainly, and earlier, and uh, 20th century cookbooks are fabulous. One of the reasons why is because the photographs are horrifying. Like for instance, oh, the Instapot cookbook. I'll just throw that in the garbage, using it as a bookmark. Look at this ham. I mean, essentially it's a good ham. This just looks terrible. I mean, it's amazing. I don't know what that is. Like, did you ever see a worse looking plate of meatballs? If you look at 20th century uh, books about entertaining, the first person you're gonna think of is Martha Stewart. Before she was Martha Stewart <clears throat> Snoop Dogg doing a game show, she was an entertaining maven for entertainment knowledge. I mean, look at these pictures. This is what she used to look like, can you believe that? But if you go a little further back, you'll find um, seminal information about entertaining and cooking. If you're interested in Southern cooking, this book, The Taste of Country Cooking by Edna Lewis is a really important book because she was a black Southern woman who brought soul food, essentially soul food, into vogue in America. I would recommend Elizabeth David, a very important writer about food, one of the greatest writers being MFK Fisher, unbelievable uh, food writing. This woman also writes recipes. This is beautiful, there's no photos at all in this one, but it's fun to just read her thoughts about how to entertain. I don't know, it's fabulous. Uh, this is one of the most famous, The Gentle Art of Cookery by Mrs. Lael. Also, no pictures. Uh, this is 1920s entertaining. She has something called surprise French rolls, which consist of taking a roll of French bread, shoving your thumb in the bottom of it, and sticking in a strawberry. I mean, that's not really a surprise, is it? <laughs> um, she also has homemade wines and cups, which is one of my favorite chapters. And then, you know, creams, custards, and jellies, tray food. It's just, you know, it's fabulous and beautiful poems make your transparent sweetmeats truly nice with the Indian sugar and Arabian spice. And let your various creams encircled be with swelling fruit just ravished from the tree. Let plates and dishes be from China brought with lively paint and earth transparent wrought. Come on, that's pretty good. Pre-Martha, there was somebody called Lee Bailey. And I learned about Lee Bailey through Nora Ephron, the great comedy writer. Oh. In her, one of her memoirs, she was talking about this guy, Lee Bailey, Lee Bailey, the arbiter of style, blah, blah, Lee Bailey. And I was like, Lee Bailey? And I had this vague memory of my mother talking about Lee Bailey. And he had a store in Bendel's. And I found these fabulous Lee Bailey books, Good Parties. Of course, the photos are problematic. The photos are just bad. I don't know how to describe it. But it's beautiful advice written in the style of the late 70s, early 80s. But let's talk about our absolute favorite, Fanny Craddock. Difficult to find because I'm not the only person who enjoys a Fanny Craddock cookbook, but she has fantastic cookbooks. This is called The Cook Hostess's Book. If I may read a short excerpt. All parties should be run like battles. Hostesses should be like great generals visionaries who can see the outcome and the triumph and then work back from their visions of success and pre-plan in such a way that their minds are clear and their spirits high when the actual fray commences. I mean, that's a fabulous way to talk about throwing a dinner party. And this whole book is like that. Then we have, of course, my precious Fanny Craddock's Christmas cookery, which arrived uh, already slightly destroyed, so that was good. Anyway, I encourage you to just look around because it, t look at that photograph. <laughs> because I've never seen anything more unappetizing. It just gives you 
a history about what you're doing. What you're doing is not new. Want a lobster? Not this one. I encourage you to look into the history of your passion because the history will informs the present. And you can also learn awesome things like how they made mulled wine, why it's called a certain thing, why did they do this, why did they stop eating this way, why did they cook it like this. Like you can learn the history. Learning the history will help you improve the present in every aspect. So I encourage you to go to old bookshops and look at old cookbooks. They're fabulous. I don't know what that is. Like, did you ever see a worse looking plate of meatballs?